Welcome to the Land Geek Podcast, your resource for information and tips to making money by buying and selling land. Let the Land Geek show you how to make a passive income by working smart, not working hard. Learn strategies and tricks to make money buying and selling raw land today. And here is the man that's going to help you do that, the Land Geek. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, a.k.a. The Land Geek, from your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And today is really special. I was able to get the busiest guy. He's not really the busiest guy in land. One of the busiest guys in land because he is my star pupil, my star student. This guy went from zero to, I think it's almost like $2,500 a month in only four months. I am so proud that I thought, you know what? Let's just have a podcast with this guy so he can share with everybody that this stuff really can happen. And uh, in the land business can be really, really lucrative if all you do is act like my guest. He is Bob Anderson from Phoenix, Arizona, crazylanddeals.com. Bob Anderson, how are you, buddy? I'm good, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> nice introduction. You like that? Yeah. All right, Bob. Tell us what what's going on, man. How how are you doing what you're doing? Like walk us through your journey from land newbie to land superstar. Okay. Well, the biggest thing is you just uh, – after I purchased your material, uh, then you and I had did some coaching, and then I you got to put in action what you're taught. And, you know, my philosophy is live and learn. And it's been very exciting to do this. I, I can't believe – honestly, I can't believe uh, where I'm at at this point. Uh, within four months of advertising – let me back up. First, my whole goal was just to, to buy. And it's like, okay, I got that part down. Now I'm going to start advertising. So in four months of advertising, I've sold a total of 14 properties. Wow. Uh, I just sold one yesterday to a guy that he, he just uh, sent me an email out of the blue with the information that I was going to put in the documents. I sold it on a terms. And I talked to him for one minute in the afternoon. He signed the paperwork, gave me the down payment, and, and we're all good to go. Yeah, and, you're, and your margins are ridiculous, right? I mean, you're yeah. averaging what? Uh, I'm averaging about 1,000%. Wow. Like, like on this guy, I, I bought the property for $95. <laughs> <laughs> the, the taxes that are due by the end of this month, 447 bucks. Right. Okay, so that's total investment, say $542. I sold it on a five-year note for just a little over $6,000, and which means the that's a 1,109%. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So, and you've done 14 of those deals in just four months. So you're averaging about, what, two a week? now in sales or one a week what do you yeah what well what happened at first uh, i sold one a week when i first started this Mm -hmm. and i was like wow this is beautiful and then all of a sudden i hit a dry spell for whatever reason and then now people are just wanting land i'm getting interest uh every single day from multiple people and you're not doing anything special with your marketing all i'm doing is i'm advertising on craigslist right uh, and also, you know, doing the renewing uh, of the ads every uh, couple of days. Uh, land Watch. Right. And land, and land and Farm. Land and Farm. Unbelievable. So l- let me ask you, when you first got started, what was your biggest challenge with this business? The biggest <laughs> challenge is like most people, when you get the list, just trying to figure out what do you do with that list? How, how do you scrub the list? What information is necessary. Right, right. Every Yeah, you know, it's so funny because people that join the Gold Mastermind, it all starts with the list. How do I get the list? How much do I pay for the list? How do I scrub the list? 
And uh, and Paul Paul Mandel is like so funny about it. He's like, please scroll down and read what everybody else's comments were first before asking these questions. Yeah, exactly. And then Tor- and then Tori today on the uh, on the mastermind was he was like, you know what? I'll jump in after we talk about the list. He didn't even want to be on the call in- until after we talked about the list. So that's I'm going to do an FAQ for uh, for the students that are new because they always have those. Same three questions about the list. Although I think it is in the 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 investors toolkit DVDs. I have that in the FAQ section. Um, but I'm gonna just write it out so it's just super super clear. So that was the biggest challenge. And then and the thing is, yeah. you just gotta act. I mean, throw out the numbers, whether they're high or low. It's irrelevant. Just you know, act and uh, let the phone ring. Right. Right. And. What, what what's your background? I mean, what were you doing before you got in the land, and what made you want to even get in the land? I don't even know how you found me. <laughs> I found you in a roundabout way. <laughs> uh, my background is transportation operations for shipping companies. Uh huh. And back when the in two thousand five, I actually uh, got my real estate license, and, and I solely got that not because I wanted to be a realtor per se. It was because I wanted to buy rental properties okay so you've always had i mean since 2005 you had an interest in real estate but that was that was just like a part-time thing that that was a part-time thing and i made gobs of money in a very short amount of time but then the market crashed and um uh, and so did my employer i worked for a billion dollar a year company that went bankrupt oh my god so you so 2008 hit you very hard that was 2006 that the employer went bankrupt and yeah, oh, I thought things were roaring in 2006. 2006, they, that, went, that, they were like two years before the crash. That, that was just before, uh-huh. And then I was also uh, working for a, a, a real estate investor here in Phoenix. Mm-hmm. He would advertise on the radio and TV uh, that we buy houses for cash, and I would go out and uh, meet with the homeowners. And uh, my very first deal, I spent a total of three and a half hours, and I bought it for uh, a smoking price, and... I made thirty five hundred bucks. Wow! And but that was short lived. Then the investor asked me to actually focus on foreclosures, and that's when the banks weren't even responding to the offers. So anyway, then let's fast forward to uh, a couple of years ago. I, I remembered uh, somebody mentioning tax liens. Okay. So I, I started. I purchased a course, and I was all into, you know, I was going to move forward with the tax liens. And I was like, you know, this, I could, I could get, you know, high interest and that's, but that's not what I want. I wanted even more. So then, uh, you had a little, uh, section on Joanne Musa's. Yeah. The the tax lien lady, right? Uh Uh-huh. So she brought you to me. Uh Uh-huh. (laughs) <laughs> that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna so that's it. how it happened. And okay. I said, you know, after yeah. seeing, after you and I uh, talking and, and talking about 300% and 1,000%, I said, that's a lot better than just 18%. <laughs> you know, what's interesting is that, you you know, coming from house flipping, you weren't skeptical of the returns. Like, you were kind of all in. Yeah. You're like, yeah, I can do this. Yeah. You know, most people are like, that's, that's, in, those those returns are ludicrous. And uh, they don't believe me, but you're living proof of it. Exactly. So that's that's incredible. All right. So walk us through your very first deal. Uh, soup to nuts. Like, how did you get it? How did you sell it? What did you sell it for? How exciting was it? And kind of, <laughs> kind of walk us through it. Okay. My very first deal was uh, just doing the lowball offers on taxes that are owed. Uh, that particular property... I paid the owner $57 for a little over one acre. <laughs> Bob, why weren't you calling me and saying, Mark, I got a deal I'll split with you? I just, yeah. need, I just, you know, if you could just help me come up with the, uh, with half of the 57, we'll, we'll yeah, split right. 50 50. So then, uh, you didn't, the need any, you didn't need any capital, no hard money on that one. No, not on $57. Okay. Just check. That, that's, that's what's really good about this program is that you can, uh, have very little money. To get started, I know. So I mean, Duran, Duran started with eight hundred dollars. By the way, I started oh, with three thousand. 
your first deal was fifty seven bucks. Okay, sorry. I'm going go ahead. Okay. Yeah, and and uh the taxes that were owed on that property two hundred and seventy three dollars. So the total was three hundred and thirty bucks. Three hundred and thirty, but you didn't pay the taxes right away, correct? I did not. Okay. As a matter of fact, I paid them just uh last month. Oh, okay. So what what happened is uh I sold it. This one I, I put on postlets because it actually had a, a site address. Okay, that's a great site. And then the, a guy found me off of that, and I sold it on a three-year note. And the percent that I made was uh, one thousand two hundred sixty. One thousand two hundred sixty percent. So I sold. First deal. So I sold it for over four thousand dollars. And you're into it for fifty-seven bucks plus the taxes of. Two seventy three. Two seventy three, which you didn't come out of pocket, so your your return's ridiculous. I couldn't. Yeah, yeah and and on that, you know, what I do is like on this one, I want to say that the down payment was one hundred forty nine dollars, and then what I do for uh, everyone that I'm selling on notes, uh, adding on a seventy five dollar note setup fee. Okay, so that so, that helps too. So I got two hundred twenty four dollars immediately that's great that's great then and you're, I, and you're, I now are you using virtual assistants at all or are you doing all this yourself uh i have two virtual assistants one that does the list uh scrubbing for me okay. i'm sorry the data entry data entry okay a and then i also have one that does uh the website for me and how are they working out where do you find them what are you paying them working out great i found them on both of them on fiverr uh, when it came to the data entry, it took me a while to find the right one. Okay. I had to go through probably 10 people, I, I want to say. And then I found this guy, and, and he just he's always asking me for more and more work. I love it. it, it, it you know what? I love when the, when the VAs are like, now what else? It like forces you to almost work harder just to keep them happy. Yeah, he just sent me an email <laughs> last know? night, as a matter of fact. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love that. Where's, where, then, where's the next project? Yeah, then the next, like I said, the uh, lady that does my website, I found her on Fiverr as well. So, like, for the data entry, let's go back to him. I pay uh, the equivalent of, like, $1.67 an hour. Okay. And, and I've done this stuff myself. I've done, like, 100 lines, and after that, I say no more. <laughs> 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 but I wanted to experience it, you know, and see what they have to go through. Then uh, the lady from my website, I, I initially paid her maybe $60. And then now uh, I also just recently had her set it up where it's mobile friendly because I noticed a lot of people are uh, sending me messages off of their cell phones. And that was like maybe an extra $15. And then whatever I have some... Uh, Changes that I need to my site, it's you know five, ten, fifteen dollars. I mean, it's nothing. It's nothing, nothing. It's nothing. And, and years ago, I learned how to do my own website, and and I was like, okay, I had to spend countless hours to learn the program. I had to you know do the initial investment in the software. I didn't like the first software, so I bought a second software, and then it ended up I didn't have a captcha for. Uh, filling out the fields on my website so I was getting spammed and the, the host was shutting me down so I said from now on I'm just going to pay this lady next to nothing wow and she's you know what your site looks nice she did a nice job for a, for a free WordPress theme I think yeah and, you know it's clean it's nice and now are you building your list are you doing anything with your list yeah well what I have Mark is when you go to my site there is supposed to be a pop up yeah there is and yeah, some people have told me that they don't that they don't see it, and I don't know if it's maybe because they have a pop up blocker on their cell, on their computers, or maybe it's through the cell phone or something. I I don't know, but um, yeah, I'm getting a lot of people that are opting in just off of that. Um, mostly, most of them I think are coming from not I think I know they're coming from Land Watch or Land and Farm. Okay, that's great. So you're you're driving traffic to the site. And then you're you're building your audience from there and selling land, right? Because because every single ad I put my website on there. 
Yeah, no, it's and, great. And, and I say, go, you know, sign up for the VIP list. <laughs> it's great. It's great. It's so great. At, at this point, I have probably about 80 people on the list in the last few months. Yeah, so it's a slow drip, just a couple mm-hmm. every day, right? Yep. Yeah, I mean, that's that's how you build. That's how you start. And, um, you know, the the results really speak for themselves because you're, you know, you're just doing it. It's not like uh, you're messing around, you know, I'll get people who are, you know, asking me about their logo, should I – set up an LLC, like you just went into it, you know, just like, okay, I'm gonna start making lowball offers. Got a bunch of deals in, You're like, okay, now I'm gonna sell it. I mean, did you even set up an LLC? No. No. As a matter of fact, last week I spoke with my CPA uh, regarding setting up an LLC and and he was telling me, you know, tax wise, at this moment, there there's no purpose for me. Right. Yeah. I mean, there's really, there's not that that huge of, of an advantage i mean I, I would argue you know you can certainly have some tax advantages because you can run expenses through the company uh pre-tax but i'm not sure exactly how, how, how things are going with you and your personal tax situation so right it, it may not have any personal bearing but in general in this business that's really more advantageous than the actual you know corporate protection because you know, at the end of the day, I'm not sure how how safe an LLC is. If somebody wants to sue you, they're going to sue you. And if a, if a clever attorney wants to pierce the corporate veil and go after you, they probably could, anyways. Yeah, but, I agree. So, and and really, my philosophy is happy customers guaranteed. You know, I've been doing this since 2001. No lawsuits, knock on wood. And you know, the old saying in real estate is, it's not a matter of if you'll be sued; it's when. And uh, if you just – because we're not doing these huge multi-million dollar deals where it somebody should go out and sue you. You know what I mean? Right. Just give them their money back if they're, if they're right. not happy. I, I also think that when you're what, – what, at least when I'm talking with the customers is I'm up front. If they ask me a question, I don't know the answer, I'll, I'll just tell them I don't know the answer. Or I'll say, you know what, maybe you should contact the county and – you know they can hopefully answer your question, but just be truthful. Don't don't do anything. Don't say things just to get the sale. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And people respect that. Exactly. When you say I don't know, they respect it. Did I did I tell you about this study done with like kids? Um, I was watching. I was I was watching. I was listening to a Freakonomics podcast, and it turns out I think I talked about this with Duran. It turns out the uh, the three hardest words in the English language are I don't know. Like from when we're real small and, the, and the, the person doing the experiment would say to the child, you know, you can say I don't know. But they would come up with these elaborate stories to, you know, to just kind of skirt having to say I don't know. It was really interesting. So, um, yeah, there's nothing wrong with it at all. All right. So you did your first deal. Let me ask you, I mean, what's your – you know, the list part was the most challenging part of the business. What's your favorite part of this business? Well, <laughs> when you and I first uh, got on the phone, uh, here I, I received a payment. Right. Yeah, that feels good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I just got paid. Yeah. But no, seriously, I mean, of course, that's important. But uh, the, my favorite part is not having to go to an office you know, I can do this from anywhere that I have internet and a cell phone. Um, yeah, no one telling you what to do. No boss. My favorite part is the, the freedom. The freedom. Okay. Yeah, the freedom where I don't have to go to an office and be there at certain times. And uh, I can do this anywhere, you know, that I have internet access and a cell phone. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's great. It's great when you're on vacation and you're making sales, too. It just feels so good. You know what I mean? Have you have you yep. have you done this on vacation yet? No. No. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was just in Palm Springs with my son, and uh, you know it was great. Like, I we'd, we'd get back from uh, like a big dinner and like, oh yeah, I just got paid. <laughs> so <laughs> you know, there's there's another you know couple of no payments. That's nice. Yeah. Just yeah. gonna check on things. 
it's it's great it's great um yeah i mean the freedom is really so so great no boss no commute and how how many hours a day are you working doing this business I would say, and I'm doing a lot of the stuff myself that uh, you know I could actually have somebody else do. Um, by that, for example, if I'm doing mailings, uh, I'm the one printing the paper, you know, stuffing the envelope, supplying the stamp. But uh, when it's all said and done in a, in a week's time, maybe 15 hours. 15 hours a week, so about maybe two hours a day. Two to three yeah. hours a day. Two to three hours a day. Okay. That's that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, and you know, we're in the short amount of time where I see the the monthly income, it's like I, I just say, okay, if I did that in four months, if I did a couple thousand in four months, then what can I do in a year's time? I, I can have six thousand a month, and in two years' time, I can have twelve thousand a month. You know what I mean? I just right, right. Which which you're on track to do? Yeah. So yeah, I mean, and that's the question is. You know, when you look at your fixed expenses, you can say, okay, at this point, I don't know what your fixed expenses are, but you could probably say at this point, I have complete total freedom. And your total financial freedom in the sense that your passive income now exceeds your fixed expenses. Yeah. I mean, that's that's really special. And I, I was saying to Duran that, you know, when you're at $10,000 a month, that's literally like saving two point four million dollars. Literally, at with, at a four percent yield. I mean, I don't. I mean, that's really hard to do. It, it's it's hard to do in in four years, let alone you know, two years, or whatever you're on. You're on track about in two years. So, to save two point four million dollars to generate that kind of income in two years is astounding. Astounding. I mean, I don't. I think the average American doesn't have over a million dollars even saved. I don't even. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know if they have any saved. Actually, <laughs> exactly. I mean, so that's a big number, and that's really, really fast. So, and, and the thing that I love too is, you know, I sit there and I look at, okay, this is what my income is now, but if I stopped, which I'm not going to, but if I stop this business today. I still have money for years to come, right? Just because I'm, I'm selling on uh, notes, right? Right. I mean, and then let me ask you, like, it's it's fun, right? I mean, what what do you enjoy aspects of it? Are there aspects you don't enjoy? Is there any drudgery of this business, or like no. for me, it's like pure fun? Yeah, for me, it's fun too. So, like, my wife's like, you know, when are you going to retire? When are you going to slow down? I'm like, well, why would I? It's not, it doesn't feel like work. Right. It's just, it's hustling for deals. Yep. Have you always been kind of a deal guy? Have you always wanted to get a good deal and, you know, been kind of a deal junkie? (laughs) 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 To to be honest, no. You haven't, no. No. Uh Uh-uh. That's that's funny. Yeah. Um, But when I, you know, like I said, back when I was doing real estate, I was just, just cleaning up um but that that was i i truly believe that it's because i'm honest i'm honest with people you just you've got that that those midwestern ethics exactly right? yeah we're now you're originally from chicago wisconsin but it's close to chicago well my wife's from wisconsin and it's like every uh person who's born in wisconsin's dream to live in the chicago suburbs <laughs> <laughs> it's like that's making it. One day I'm going to yeah. get out of here and I'm going to live in, you know, Highland Park or, or, uh, what is it? Deer, Deer, uh, what's it called? Deer Park or Deer, Dearborn I don't know. or I forget the, one of those Brooks. I forget. Um, I don't, I don't know my, my Chicago suburbs as well as I should, but, uh, yeah. That's funny. So, so you're from Wisconsin. What part of Wisconsin? I, it's called. Well, I grew up in Elkhorn and Delavan, which is really close to the Illinois border. Okay. Okay. So when when I was growing up, I was always a, a Bears fan, a Bulls fan. Okay, great. And did your parents have any kind of real estate background, 
Or was, no. is this all new to you? No, this is all new to me. Okay. And how different is land as opposed to houses? <laughs> well, you say that there's no T's. <laughs> <laughs> Which is true. I, I did not did not like having rental properties. Yeah, I, I'm done with it. You got? Any, you have any stories? Uh, just when somebody would move out, uh, you know, it would cost me thousands of dollars to get it back into rental shape. Yeah. And, and I had this one guy. I, I held on to him for too long. He was always late, but he always came up with the money. So. I, I kid you not, on a continuous basis, I was driving to Surprise, which is a good half an hour drive to the courthouse, and uh, doing my, uh, going in front of the judge <laughs> <laughs> for the eviction process. And anyway, yeah. He eventually, like I said, he always came up with the money, but I had to go through that exercise, and I just didn't like it. Yeah, that's, that's never any fun. For sure. So if you were if you were somebody that was on the fence about investing in the investors toolkit or getting into the land business or maybe even doing coaching, what would be your advice? Do it. Get get the investor toolkit. Sign up for coaching. I I, I met with Mark a couple of times uh, with the coaching and it worked wonders. I mean, look today, Mark. I've sold. I, I can't believe it, but yes, with yesterday's sale, I've sold over a hundred and three thousand dollars worth. <laughs> That's pretty fast, and uh, yeah, and your your return is ridiculous. Yeah, just ridiculous. I, like like my highest return was uh, on a property, and I know uh, when I <clears throat> when I first got it, I was like, this this is too good to be true. Um, I paid four hundred and sixty six dollars. The taxes were eleven forty eight. So which by the way, I just paid the taxes uh off last month as well. Okay. So my, my total investment and that was because I did receive a, a letter from an attorney saying that they were gonna begin the uh tax lien, the foreclosure on it. Oh, okay. So so that's why I paid it off. But you know, my total investment was sixteen hundred dollars. Now I found the perfect buyer because these property there's only like two dozen of these properties in this area right off of a highway and the rest is all government land it's uh, mountains so I, I was like I can't believe that I bought this thing for so cheap right when I when I was looking at the comps and it turned out where I sent a, a mailing to the neighbors and this guy, his parents live there, and his brother has a property there. So, of course, he wanted one as well. So I sold it on a 10-year note for about $32,000. That was almost 2,000%. That's crazy. That's and crazy. He, and in my opinion, he was the only one that could have bought it. You know what I mean? Or would have bought it. Right, yeah. I mean, they're the, they're the perfect buyer, which is another reason land is so great. Is you already have this perfect buyer already in place because the neighbors want it. The neighbors want it. Yeah. Typically. And, and, yeah. And, and, you know, like the other day you and I were talking about, I, I was kind of, uh, uh, embarrassed. I guess, I guess I could say to say that I was only going to get, you know, like 500% right. on, on a deal. <laughs> right. And, you, and you were a little disappointed. I was. Yeah. No, it, no, I'm telling you, this business screws you up. I know. It totally screws you up mentally in that yeah. sense. Yeah. Um, yeah, you only made 540%. I remember. I'm like, only made – I'm like, I'm like, repeat what you just said to me. Think about that. You only yeah. made 540%. But I feel the same way when I, when I do that too. I'm like, oh, gosh, it's terrible. It's only, you know. I only made 600% on this deal. It's like, right. you know, the market's tough. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, all right. Well, we're at that but point. But I have, I have noticed an upswing in, in the market. How about you? No, I definitely have. The market's much more yeah. fun than it was even yeah. even six months ago. I mean, it's it's definitely a lot more fun. 
Um, as Jeff Axton would say, you know, he doesn't want it to get any better. He doesn't want it to get any worse. Just nice equilibrium where it's easy to buy, easy to sell. Sure. All right. So Bob Anderson, student extraordinaire, what is your tip of the week? Well, I was going to mention one uh, before we actually got on the, the podcast, but you said, uh, uh, uh. That's only for uh, the mastermind students. Yeah, exactly. That was because I'm the one that gave you that. And I'm like, no, that one's too good. That's a paid tip. So if you want the really good tips, you got to join the mastermind. Okay. So uh, my tip is it's called I touch map, all one word, dot com slash lat long for latitude, long, longitude dot html and, and this this website if you have a site address you can plug it in there and then it what it'll do is it'll actually tell you what is the uh, latitude and longitude nice nice all right well i'm going to link to that because i'm not going to remember that that site for sure but that's a great one that's great for due diligence all right so my tip of the week is going to be a little techie um it is spot s-p-o-t like you got a spot on your shirt, dot I M, like I I for igloo, M is in Mary. And what it is, you host live conversations on your site. And it's free. And you can really connect with your community, your people, um, increase the time on your site and promote. It's cool. And um, I think I told you the story about my Google hangout and how I sold right. four, you know, four pieces of property on, on a Google, on a Google hangout, you can do the same thing with this, um, just on your website. And it's really easy. It's just simple, uh, copy and paste. And again, it's free. Um, so check it out spot.im and see if you can utilize it on your website, on your land site and whatever it may be. So Bob, how do you feel about the podcast? I feel good. It was good, right? Yeah. You were a little nervous. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but it went by fast. But, you, you know, where, when I wasn't nervous was uh, to actually follow through and uh, make things happen. That's right. You That's know, right. Don't, like I said, don't, don't just sit idle. You got to act. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's so true. I mean, it's it's really about taking action. And even if, even if things don't go as smoothly as they did, like for you, right? You, I mean, you're gonna hit a, a wall at some point. I'm sure you hit a wall, but you kept taking action and the right kind of action, you know, money making action, sending out lowball offers and then selling the property and marketing the property. Property. It's like you stuck to the right elements of this business and didn't get sidetracked with something, you know that really would I would consider ancillary to the business. Right. Which is great. It's great. So, uh, well, thanks. You, you, you know, you come back on uh, another time and tell us some more success stories. All right. Sounds good. But, yeah, Bob, I'm so proud of you. You're, you're just crushing it, crushing Thank it. Thank you. Um, anyways, if you guys want more tips, tricks, techniques on how to become just like Bob Anderson and start building up a passive income, get to $2,500, actually beat Bob, exceed $2,500 in four months of passive income, go to www.thelandgeek.com, download for free the Passive Income Blueprint, get the ebook, How to Avoid the Three Fatal Land Buying Mistakes, and of course get this always informative and engaging podcast delivered each week to your email inbox. And if you want to acquire some raw land, check out Bob's site. Go to www.crazylanddeals.com. Watch how Bob makes this magic happen. And if Bob doesn't have anything you want, check out my site. Go to frontierpropertiesusa.com. Get some wholesale land there. And uh, Land Geek community, I appreciate everyone taking time out of your day to listen to the podcast and learn more about our lucrative niche. And uh, Bob, thanks again. You'll come back? Yes. All right, fantastic. All right, well, thanks, everybody. See you next time.
Thank you for listening to another episode of The Land Geek. Join us next time for more tips, secrets, and information that will help you succeed. Stay connected with The Land Geek on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelandgeek.